There are going to be people along the way who will try to undercut your success or take credit for your accomplishments or your fame. You don't let those people sidetrack you. It appears that Taylor Swift has reached her breaking point with the Kardashians, and this time she's not holding back and expressing her true feelings about Kim. Following the release of her 11th studio album, The Tortured Poets Department, fans quickly singled out one song among the 31 new tracks. Fans strongly believe that the 24th track, titled Thank You, Amy, is directed at Kim as the letters K, I, and M are capitalized to spell out her name. Over the years, Taylor has shared significant bad blood with Kanye West and Kim Kardashian, often finding herself targeted without valid reason. However, this time around, she's surprising fans by throwing some shade of her own. In one line in the song, Taylor sings, there's a bronze spray tan statue of you and a plaque underneath it that threatens to push me down the stairs at our school. Taylor has previously spoken about her feud with Kim and how it took her down psychologically. Taylor also seems to hit out at Kim's 10-year-old daughter, Northwest, as she sings, and so I changed your name and any real defining clues, and one day your kid comes home singing a song that only us two is gonna know is about you. North and Kim share a TikTok together and have previously danced along to Taylor's 2014 hit, Shake It Off. Kim Kardashian dances with her daughter, North, to Taylor Swift's Shake It Off. I love Taylor Swift. I'm the biggest Taylor Swift fan. Taylor and Kim's long-standing feud began with the singer's clash with Kanye during the 2009 VMAs incident. Kanye, visibly upset, disrupted Taylor's acceptance speech for Best Female Video, insisting that Beyonce deserved the award instead. He famously said, Yo, Taylor, I'm really happy for you. I'ma let you finish, but Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. Yo, Taylor. I'm really happy for you, I'm let you finish, but Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. This event marked the start of their ongoing tension. The incident drew immediate backlash from viewers, with Taylor being cut off from completing her acceptance speech. However, Beyonce later invited her on stage during her own acceptance of the Video of the Year Award. In 2014, after marrying Kanye, Kim stood proudly beside him as he received the Vanguard Award at the VMAs, seemingly signaling an end to their feud. Taylor even presented him with the award, suggesting they had squashed their beef. Yet, in a later interview, Taylor revealed that tensions remained high. Kanye had claimed on stage that Taylor was asked to present the award for ratings, leading to her refusal to speak with him backstage. In an exclusive chat with Rolling Stone, Taylor spilled the tea, saying, I'm standing in the audience with my arm around his wife, and this chill ran through my body. I realized he is so two-faced that he wants to be nice to me behind the scenes, but then he wants to look cool, get up in front of everyone, and talk shit, and I was so upset. He wanted me to come talk to him after the event in his dressing room. I wouldn't go. And then, cue the drama bomb. Kanye drops famous with those jaw-dropping lines about Taylor and the internet explodes. I feel like me and Taylor might still have sex. Why? I made that famous. Fans went wild, calling out Kanye for being way out of line. Kanye fires back with a tweet, now deleted, claiming, I called Taylor and had an hour-long convo with her about the line and she thought it was funny and gave her blessings. Taylor's rep then quickly swooped in, telling People Mag she declined and cautioned him about releasing a song with such a strong misogynistic message. Taylor was never made aware of the actual lyric, I made that be famous, and if that wasn't enough, Kim threw gasoline on the fire by dropping a Snapchat bombshell. She leaked a bit of Kanye on the phone with Taylor, seemingly getting her blessing for the song's lyrics. After spitting out the line, Wes can be heard saying, I think this is a really cool thing to have. Swift responds, I know, it's like a compliment, kind of. Yeah, I mean, what's dope about the line is it's very tongue-in-cheek either way. And I really appreciate you telling me about it. That's really nice. Taylor faced a storm of criticism when the video went viral, with many branding her a snake. Kim's post triggered a flood of snake memes, but Taylor didn't back down, sticking to her version of events in a fiery social media post. She wrote, That moment when Kanye West secretly records your phone call, then Kim posts it on the internet. She continued, Where is the video of Kanye telling me he was going to call me that B in his song? It doesn't exist because because it never happened. You don't get to control someone's emotional response to being called that B in front of the entire world. He promised to play the song for me, but he never did. While I wanted to be supportive of Kanye on the phone call, you cannot approve a song you haven't heard. Being falsely painted as a liar when I was never given the full story or played any part of the song is character assassination. I would very much like to be excluded from this narrative, one that I have never asked to be a part of since 2009. After clapping back, Taylor retreated from the spotlight for a year, resurfacing with a bang when she dropped her new single, Look What You Made me do in 2017. Making a grand re-entry, Taylor's track and its music video directly targeted the trolls who labeled her a snake post Kim's phone call leak. In a symbolic move, the video features Taylor seated on a throne encircled by snakes, clearly aimed at Kim and Kanye. Later in the video, the line et to brut is seen carved onto her throne, seemingly lamenting what Taylor perceives as a betrayal by former friend Kim. After a period of quiet between Taylor and Kanye, the star erupted on Instagram, directing her anger at celebrity manager Scooter, who acquired the rights to her mask 
Sisters in 2019. In her post, she once again took a pointed dig at Kanye and his 2016 track, Famous. She wrote, some fun facts about today's news. I learned about Scooter Braun's purchase of my master's as it was announced to the world. All I could think about was the incessant manipulative bullying I've received at his hands for years. Like when Kim Kardashian orchestrated an illegally recorded snippet of a phone call to be leaked, and then Scooter got his two clients together to bully me online about it. Or when his client, Kanye West, organized a revenge P music video that strips my body. In her track, Miss Americana, Taylor noted that she felt alone and bitter during her fallout with Kanye and Kim, adding that she was branded wicked and evil. She said, when people decided I was wicked and evil and conniving and not a good person, that was the one I couldn't really bounce back from because my whole life was centered around it. I felt really alone. I felt really bitter. I felt sort of like a wounded animal lashing out. I figured I had to reset everything. In the leaked footage, Kanye is seen informing Taylor he is writing a song about her and asking her if she could hype it up by tweeting about it. Kanye tells her, it has a very controversial line at the beginning of the song about you. Kanye then told Taylor she sounded sad and the singer questioned if the lyrics were mean, at which point he reassured her that he didn't think they were. He then says the lyric, to all my Southside ninjas that know me best, I feel like Taylor Swift might owe me S. Taylor laughs and says, that's not mean. Kanye goes on, if you felt that it's funny and cool and hip hop and felt like it's the college dropout and ye that you love, people would be way into it. And that's why I think it's super genius to have you be the one that says, oh, I like this song a lot. This is cool. Taylor then tells Kanye she needs some time to think about it, adding, when you hear something for the first time, you need to think about it because it is absolutely crazy. There is no mention Kanye would call her a B word or suggest he made her famous during the phone call. In her response on social media after the leaked phone call, Taylor emphasized that the conversation proves I was telling the truth all along about that call, you know, the one that was illegally recorded, edited, and manipulated to frame me and put me, my family, and fans through hell for four years. In her Instagram story post, Swift essentially urged everyone to move on from the highly publicized feud between her, Kim, and Kanye, which originated from the rapper's lyrics in his song, Famous. The singer spilled that the ongoing feud really got to her, taking her down psychologically to a place she hadn't been before. Speaking to the publication, she revealed, that took me down psychologically to a place I I've never been before. I moved to a foreign country. I didn't leave a rental house for a year, Taylor went on, sharing, I was afraid to get on phone calls. I pushed away most people in my life because I didn't trust anyone anymore. I went down really, really hard. Circling back to the new diss song Taylor dropped, the track is filled with high school drama, painting Amy as Swift's teenage style bully that she one day dreamed of triumphing over. All that time you were throwing punches, I was building something and I can't forgive the way you made me feel. Screamed F you Amy to the night sky as the blood was gushing. She passionately expresses on the track while also acknowledging her adversary's impact, but I can't forget the way you made me heal. In another part of the song, Swift argues that the battle between them was never fair or clean. She hints at Amy, let's just call her Kardashian, stomping across her grave and creating headlines mocking each baby step I'd take. In 2021, Kardashian surprised fans by giving props to Swift and her music during an episode of the Honestly with Barry Weiss podcast. I really like a lot of her songs, she shared when asked about her favorite Swift track. They're all super cute and catchy. I'd have to look in my phone to get a name. But if Thank You Amy is any indication, Swift hasn't moved on in the same way. In fact, the song suggests that Kardashian's words are still just ringing in my head. Swift also brings her mom, Andrea, into the mix, stating, everyone knows that my mother is as a saintly woman, but she used to say she wished that you were dead. In the bridge, Swift wonders if perhaps Kardashian has reframed the feud to help herself let go, where in your mind, you never beat my spirit black and blue. Swift then emphasizes that she shielded Kardashian's identity in the track by changing the name and avoiding defining clues. Though, let's be real, the song practically screams Kardashian from start to finish, right down to the title. The song wraps up with Swift playfully hinting at Kardashian's newfound love for her music, speculating that maybe Kardashian's children, North, 10, Saint, 8, Chicago, 6, and Psalm 4, whom she shares with West, will also become fans. And one day, your kid comes home singing a song that only us two is gonna know is about you, Swift quips. She concludes by giving Kardashian a final nod of genuine appreciation. Our town, it looks so small from way up here, she muses. Thank you, Amy. So what do you guys think about all of this drama? Was it long overdue and well-deserved? Let us know your thoughts on this whole situation down below. And as always, thanks for watching.